They're larger than any animal on the planet and bigger than any dinosaur that ever lived. There it is, right here to the right. Right now, we are headed out into the open ocean uh, looking for blue whales. And we're lucky enough to be able to see them right off the Southern California coast. Kira Mathis is a biologist with the Aquarium of the Pacific. I think that's a fin whale breaching, oh my gosh. She leads research tours in Long Beach and says the whale watching has never been better. The reason? Blue whales are attracted to their favorite food called krill. Over the last 10 years or so, there's been a shift in the krill. So we've had a lot more krill in this area and they're always gonna go where the food is. But the whales are also in dangerous waters. This stretch of ocean between Santa Barbara and south to Long Beach is a busy traffic lane for huge cargo ships. Every year, 5,000 ships make the 130-mile journey through the channel to the LA and Long Beach ports. And sometimes, ships and whales collide. And when that happens, the whale always loses. This is an incredible picture of a 62-foot fin whale draped across the bow of a tanker in Long Beach. It's believed the whale was killed after being struck by the ship. The container ships are very large, so and they're moving, you know, at a good speed. So when these ships come through, the propellers will actually sever their spines. And it happens fairly often. The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration says over the past decade off California's coast, ships and whales have collided 61 times. And biologists say it could be 10 times that often. We think the true number is much higher than that. We can use markings on the underside of the fluke to recognize individual. John Callum Bakitis is a biologist with the Cascadia Research Collective in Washington State. Most whales, when they die, sink. And so they would never be discovered. Our main estimate is this blue line right here. 2007 was especially fatal. Four blue whales were killed by cargo ships. But wouldn't you think the whales would avoid these huge vessels? We don't see any indication of the whales avoiding the ships. The whales may actually react by spending more time at the surface. And of course, that's the very opposite reaction you would want if they're to avoid being struck by a ship. So our early indications are they're not avoiding the ships and they may react in ways that are counterproductive. And that may be why this species in particular is so vulnerable. This is a map of the whales' movements off the coast of Long Beach. The colored dots show where the whales feed. The white lines are the shipping lanes. You can see why whales are in danger. Still, no ship captain wants to hit a whale. They'd all prefer to steer clear. I can't imagine anything more tragic than a vessel striking a whale. And I'm sure that every shipmaster that I've ever spoke to on this issue, they're just heart sick at the very concept that it, that it could potentially happen. But on such enormous vessels, some close to 1,000 feet long, even a blue whale, the largest animal in the world, is nearly impossible to see. If you've ever been on a modern container vessel, they are several stories above the water level. The bridge is usually far back, and the master of the vessel is usually looking over rows and rows of containers as he looks out to sea. In 2011, off the coast of San Diego, this 67-foot pregnant fin whale washed ashore. She and her unborn calf were killed when a ship hit them. Scientists say her vertebrae were fractured. Callum Bakitis and his team can track the movements of blue whales by attaching suction cup tags to them. This is only legal when you have a research permit from the federal government, and it's dangerous. They've counted about 2,000 blue whales, and their numbers were growing for a while. But then over the last 20 years, we haven't seen any increase in those numbers. We don't know the exact reason why they're not increasing, but one of the things we're very concerned about is ship strikes as a potential cause. So what can be done to protect these magnificent creatures? A study done by the U.S. Coast Guard made several recommendations. First, move the shipping lanes. In fact, the Coast Guard's recommendation was approved, and in July 2013, the shipping lane was moved to make it safer for the whales. Another option? Slow the big cargo ships down. There's scientific data, mostly from the East Coast and other areas, that if you slow ships down and there is a ship strike, it is less likely to kill the whale. But the Shippers Association disagrees. They say the science doesn't yet support the idea that slowing down will save whales and it will cost the industry money. Time is money. 
at any reduction in vessel speed coming in and out of the Santa Barbara Channel would result in additional cost. So in July, a nonprofit group and the County of Santa Barbara started offering shippers $2,500 a trip to slow down. It's not a lot of money and shippers don't have to participate, but if the pilot program makes a difference, it could be extended. These changes are encouraging for Callum Bakitas and other whale advocates who believe it's possible for humans and whales to coexist. Oh, I don't know anything that's more beautiful than the shimmering color of this giant animal when it's underwater in the sunshine. And yet here it is five, 10 miles off of one of our densest areas of human habitation. And that's just such an incredible opportunity for humans and for the whales. If we can protect whales in an area like this, I mean, that's great hope for finding ways that we can have this wonderful animal feed right here in one of the densest human areas that we have. I'm Val Zavala for SoCal Connected.